Hey everyone, CJ here. Uh, today I wanted to make a video on my wood slash coal stove, the Cozy King 300 made by DS Stoves. Some of you have been emailing me, you wanted some tips on how to make uh, your wood last longer and how, just some tips in general on how to use a stove. I don't have a whole lot, but what I've learned over the years, I'm going to share with you in this video. Now if you're looking to get the most heat and the longest burn times out of your stove, it all starts right here with your firewood. And for me, what I'm burning here mostly is cherry, elm, and locust. And I'll go into more about locust here in a little bit. But I season mine for one year. Keep in mind it's stored back here in a woodshed. It never gets wet. And uh, it's worked out pretty good for me for the past four years. When we first moved in here, uh, there was a gap around all the windows that wasn't sealed uh, so we changed all the windows out most of the house wasn't insulated and we've got over half of it insulated now the attic wasn't insulated and it's insulated now so we are able to hold a whole lot more heat than we did before and plus we used to have a different stove we used to have a caddy stove that the firebox was half the size of my DS stove and I tell you what, there were some cold nights where I'd have to go fill that thing up about four times a night just to make sure that the house was 60 degrees when we woke up in the morning. But it's a whole new story now that the house is almost completely sealed up and that we got a bigger stove that with the Cozy King 300. Uh, like last night, for example, it got down to 18, 19 degrees. I filled up the stove at 9 o'clock last night and we woke up to the house being 64 degrees in the morning still had coals in there to fire up the stove again and uh, to warm the house back up so we've come a long ways alright so there's a few adjustments that you can make on this stove to make uh, burning wood more efficient for you uh, what I like to do before I go to bed at night if you want to get the stove to run all night long what I like to do is get a nice hot fire going something a little bit more than this you know I want some flames going and what I'll do I'll take the biggest pieces of locust that I have and chuck as many as I can in there and then when I shut this door I'm going to take these air dampers and I go ahead and just turn them completely shut now you're still getting air from these top holes there's holes going across the top rim of this here and then the draft blower in the back. So right here is my draft blower. You can see my uh, plate. I have it pulled back just about halfway. And when uh, the thermostat calls for heat, it kicks that draft blower on, gets the fire going again, gets the stove hot, and then it, it will kick on. So that's how I get my stove to run all night long. Like I said, with that old stove, I used to have to get up about four times a night on a really cold night. And even then, the house was barely 60 degrees when we woke up. So in the mornings when I come down, normally this is what you wake up to. Just a, a bed of uh, hot coals there. I'll throw some tiny pieces of wood in there and uh, get the flames going. Mm. And then if the house needs heated up, like, like this morning, it was 64 degrees, I went ahead, opened up these air dampers a little bit, and that gets you a hot fire faster and helps raise the temperature up faster in the house. For those of you that have been watching the channel, you'll remember that last year, we found a crack on both sides of this top uh, piece of the door and uh, what happened was that crack would go on this flange here and then it was starting to come across the face of the stove so I got a hold of uh, Colway where I bought it and they got a hold of DS they ended up sending a welder out here and he went ahead and ground out these cracks and welded up the whole front all the way across the top and I'm pleased to tell you that everything is holding up and it's looking great. Alright, so here's the pipe coming out of the stove on the back side. And it comes through here and it goes through the wall. And on the other side of this wall is my chimney. Uh, here's another adjustment you can make. This air damper on the stove pipe going to the chimney. And right there would be completely open. I like to run mine just about right there. You don't want it completely shut, but you don't want it completely open either. I'll burn your wood quicker. Now down here on the back side of the stove, there is the air filter. 
And since I live in a old farmhouse that is under construction, I like to change this out once a month. Let me pull this out and I'll show you why. Well, I will say that this one is extra bad. And I think that's because I was down here sweeping up this basement this morning. Normally it's not that bad, but, but uh, yeah, I get a lot of dust in this house. Now when I first started burning, I used to chuck in any piece of wood that I could find and I didn't think about it. Now that I've had some years of experience burning, I think about every piece that I throw in. So like I said, during the daytime, I'm awake and I like coming down here looking at the stove and the fire anyway. So I'm going to throw pieces like this in, small split pieces, which I don't like to split my firewood real, real small like some people do. You know, this, this is about all the smaller I want to get. So I'm going to burn stuff like this during the daylight. Now at night, I'm going to throw a couple of these big boys in there, and that's what makes you run all night. If you're new to a wood stove, you don't think of stuff like that. So one thing I've learned over the years with this stove is that the ash bed, you want to keep it down below this ridge. Once it gets even or above, it doesn't seem to burn as hot or as efficient as it does whenever the ash is just below this uh, bottom plate here. But you don't want to completely take out all the ash. So what I'll do, go ahead and just shut my door and then we'll just shake it a little bit. And it, it dropped it about an inch right there. And then whenever you see that it's not dropping anymore, you just take out this bottom ash tray and dump it and then just put it back in there. Now I've also learned over the years that it is far more efficient to keep this thing running than to let it go out and try to start it back up. When you go to start it back up, now you have to reheat the whole stove and that just takes a lot of energy and wood just to get the stove warm back up. So you're better off just to keep the fire going. And I tell you what, it's pretty warm down here. I'm actually sweating. But I know some of you are going to ask, am I going to burn coal this year? And the answer is yes. I just haven't bought any yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get some here probably in the next week. And we're going to go ahead and burn coal for the months of January and February. That's why I like this stove because I have another option. I don't have to just burn firewood. And I think I can get coal for like $250 a ton. And that ought to last us a good while. Uh, I definitely have not mastered coal yet, but I have burned some and, and I've got it to where it would heat the house and it lasts a good while. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get better at that and uh, we'll make a video on how we burn coal. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Uh, I threw these pieces of wood in here, they started smoking. Well, I knew my air damper on the pipe going to the chimney wasn't open far enough because I had smoke coming out the front. So I went and opened that up, and now all the smoke is going up now the chimney. So that's a good way to gauge how far to open up your damper. All right, so that's all I can think of for my tips with the stove. Like I said, a lot of it is basic. I mean, pay attention to these air dampers on the door on the front here pay attention to them work with them try them out uh, check the plate on your draft blower on the back of the stove uh, the damper going out the chimney check those things mess with them uh, make sure you get a nice clean filter makes a difference and then uh, go ahead and make sure you're using good dry wood but uh, Instead of uh, trying to type out a bunch of emails and, and answering them that way, I thought we'd just make a video. I thought it would be easier for me to explain how I do things. And like I said, everything I'm doing is basic. And I try to learn something new every year. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't heard, we have a deal with LS Tractor. We're going to be making videos with the tractors and the implements. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, check out our website. We have t-shirts, coffee cups, all kinds of stuff. And uh, until next time, everybody, Merry Christmas and thanks for watching.